Welcome back to Creative Workshop and today we're going to take a look at how to make a project from start to finish. This is something you can sell, it's super easy to do, very customizable, and it'll work great with really any CO2 laser. Whether you have a Monport K40 like I've got behind me, or you have something that's larger, maybe a Monport uh, 60 watt or 80 watt or 100 watt or any other brand, if it's a CO2 laser it'll work. Now if you have a diode laser, I will show you a few tweaks that you could make that allow this project to work with your diode. But we're gonna be using clear acrylic today. We're gonna to engrave and cut and diode lasers just can't do that. But like I said, you can swap that out for any other material, whether that's a plywood or MDF or a darker acrylic. But we're gonna focus on the clear acrylic because I love the way that it looks. I love the way that it comes out. And it is a great way to add a unique and customizable piece to your portfolio. Your friends and family will love it, you'll use it, and it'll just be something great. We've already sold several of them on Etsy and also to friends and family, so it is a proven product and something that will take you just a few minutes to set up. Now my explanation will be a little bit longer than it will when you go in to actually make it, because I'm gonna explain the why. Why do we offset a certain amount? Why do we make something a certain size? Why do we use this function and, and things like that? So it'll take a little bit longer on the explanation, but once you've done it, once you've walked through this tutorial and figure out how to do it all, it'll be a breeze. I can go from somebody ordering something to cutting it out really in about two minutes when I sit down to actually start doing it. It is that simple and it works. It works great. I haven't had any problems and I love the outcome. We're also gonna be showing you a few tips and tricks in Lightburn. Things like using the weld tool, using the offset tool, and using the mirroring tool. All of those are part of this project. So with all of that said, we're gonna dive in, take a look at how you can make your own keychains or uh, tumbler tags, backpack tags, whatever you wanna call them. It is simple and easy, and we're gonna start doing that right now. Okay, if you hear a little background noise or whatever, I've got a fan running. It's like 90 degrees in the shop today, so I've got that going. But we're gonna go ahead and take a look at uh, Lightburn. I've got Lightburn open in front of me. You'll be seeing it on screen. And over here to the left, you kind of see, I've got a lot of art libraries. Now, we're not gonna be using those. I'm gonna show you how to make this from scratch and the fonts that I use, where I get them, and, and all of that. Um, but once you make it, you can see I've just got a library over here that kind of has a starting place. We're gonna go ahead and start by grabbing the text tool. We'll click, and I'm gonna use the Farmhouse Pumpkin font. That's the font that I love, and so that's what we're gonna use. Now I'm gonna type out my name, Patrick, and we're gonna make this an engrave. That is my blue layer. Now from here, you wanna make sure, and mine's basically already there, but the way that I do these, the large size of these uh, keychains that are bigger for like backpacks and stuff, I start out there and then I downsize it. So I start out with the large, which is 17.77, 17.771 one is what this is, uh, millimeters tall. And then I come over here and we're gonna use this tool right here. This is the offset tool. I offset by four millimeters outwards and I have outer shapes only, uh, select resulting objects and optimize simplify the results with a rounded corner style. That works for me. You can try it out and figure out what works for you. So we're gonna offset it. And now we're going to go ahead and make it a black layer. My black layer is my cut layer. So now it's the cut layer. That way it is not trying to do anything weird with the engraving and stuff like that. We're gonna make this as if this was going to be something that goes on a tumbler. That's my most popular one. So there's two ways to go about this. Right now, we're just over one inch tall, which one inch tall is what my large size is. But then I downsize it by 60%. So I just type in 60% here, hit enter. Now it makes it smaller. So now we have a size that is perfect for hanging off of a tumbler. We then need to make the tag, which I've already got a pre-made one here, but we'll go ahead and make it so that way you can see. I've measured the balls that I'm using on the ball chain and the ball itself is just under three mil. So we're gonna draw a circle, come back in here and say three mil. We're now going to offset this by another four 
that didn't offset correctly. Okay, so that is just me kind of looking at it. That's why, because it's offsetting four in both directions. So if we offset this by two, then we get it offset a total of four. And you don't have to offset it. You can just create another circle. You basically want a three mil circle for the ball to go through and then a seven mil circle for the outside. Once we have that, we'll select both of them, drag them down to where they're intersecting like this. And now we zoom in, makes it easier to select, grab both of these. We're gonna use the weld tool. Weld all selected shapes together. That's the one that works the best for me. I click that and now that outer circle has joined as part of this. We now have a keychain. It was literally that simple. We're, we'll run back through again, kind of to walk a little bit slower and I'll explain what each thing is doing and why I'm doing it that way. Um, and then we'll get into cutting. So we're gonna go ahead and delete all of this, zoom back out, grab our text tool. And we're gonna type in Patrick. We're gonna make it blue. Now again, that's just because that is my engraving layer. You're gonna make that whatever your engraving layer is. Now we do the offset. And here's why we do the offset the way that we do. At four mil, and you can kind of see it here, if we offset by one mil, things don't join. Two mil they start to, but not very well. Three mil, they're starting to join a little better. And for me, that four mil gives the perfect look. It has the cutout outline. I love the way that that looks. And I just really enjoy how this four mil offset looks. It, and it just works great. So now we'll hit okay. And remember, we need to change this outside offset to black, so that way it's a cut line. And then we're gonna downsize at 60%. Downsizing at 60% makes this approximately 0.6 inches tall about 15 and a half mil tall. And that's what I found works great for these tumblers. So we then need to redo that circle. So we're gonna just draw that circle at three mil and I'll show you a different way to do it now. So now we're gonna draw a seven mil and then we're just going to grab those and center them up. You've now got the exact same result. Drag it down and the thing is this part here is not super precise. It, if it's not exact every time, that's okay. You can kind of move things around till it's positioned where you like it. Grab the two outer shapes and weld those. And you now have a almost ready to cut keychain. Now, if you were doing this on plywood, which on your Monport K40, whatever you're using, you can do this on plywood. You can do it on colored acrylic. You can do it on MDF. You can do it on whatever you want. But we're gonna be doing this on a clear acrylic today. Because of that, we're gonna engrave on the backside of the acrylic, which means we need to grab this and hit this button right here and mirror it. Because we're engraving on the back, we're gonna look at it from the front, so it needs to be mirrored on the horizontal axis, which is what this button does. At this point, we're ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and load in my personal settings. And so for this, we're going to uh, flip what machine we're using. So now we're on the Monport, which brings in my Monport libraries. We're gonna grab my engraving, assign that there, and then grab three millimeter cut and assign that right there. We're ready to go. You can now cut this in one of a few ways. We can either cut this with current position, which is what I typically do, or we can cut this from absolute coordinates, which just cuts it from the X, Y, zero um, at the upper corner, at the upper left corner. You can also do it from user origin, but I find that current position works best because with current position, I'm able to uh, bring the, the laser head to where it needs to start on the acrylic and then go from there. I outline it, if it looks good, I go. And that hasn't failed me yet. If I was doing a big sheet and I needed things positioned right or whatever, I would use absolute coordinates for this job, but otherwise just use current position. I'm gonna go ahead and step away so I can get the laser cooling uh, cause I've got to turn on the cooler and it's about 90 degrees in the shop today. I believe it's about 35 degrees Celsius. So it's pretty warm. Um, you could probably see the sweat on my face and on my neck. 
so I'm gonna go ahead and get that started and I will rejoin you once we have that cooled down to 17 and a half to 18 degrees Celsius and we'll be ready to cut. Okay, so now we are back and it is time to get everything up and going. So the laser has been chilled, it is ready to roll. We've got all of our fume extraction and air assist on. And now, because we are using current position from the upper left, it'll be very easy to position the laser. You're gonna see, I'm just gonna manually position the laser and it's gonna make it kind of get everything up and going. So we're gonna go ahead and manually position. I'm just gonna grab the laser head and we're gonna move it to right about here. Because we've got this red dot, that gives us where the laser is going to hit. Now that's not 100% accurate. It kind of moves a little bit. Um, just with this system, it doesn't stay put 100% of the time, but it does stay put most of the time and it stays within reason of where it needs to be. So that is where it needs to be for that. We're going to come over here into light burn and hit frame. And that shows us that we should be perfectly good right there. Remember, we've got our settings up here. We're going to do the fill first, and then we're going to do the cut. If you are cutting with your lid open on your laser, be sure to have safety goggles or something like that on. Um, really just don't do it at all. Again, I'm only doing this like in previous videos to show you what it looks like. So I'm going to hit start and we're going to, well, before we do that, we'll preview it. This should take a minute, 27 seconds. And so we will now hit go and I'll be back with you in a minute and a half. Okay, now it's time to pull this out. I believe this is on a uh, support down there. That's why it didn't fall. Yeah, you can see right here, the corner was. But now we've got this. And we can then take this, which is reversed, and we'll go over to the workbench where we'll peel off all the masking and show you the final product. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how I peel these um, and what I do for it. And so we're gonna start by just using an X-Acto knife and pushing out or popping out this piece, which is being a little bit stubborn. Uh, typically it's not that stubborn. So we'll um, have to use something like this to push that out. And now that's out, we're good. And so then we'll grab the X-Acto knife, slide it up underneath that so we can pull it off and now all that masking pulls right off use the exacto knife to come back into here and grab all of this from the insides and then we've already kind of pushed the front off so now we can peel this off and you have an engraved keychain. Now you can see that and it looks good. That is ready for you to put a chain through. You know, I use the ball chains, like I said, uh, but you can put any type of chain through it and it's ready to go. This is ready to ship. You saw how fast it cut out. You saw how fast it was to design. And this is now a finished product. You can make several of them, take pictures of this and have a listing on Etsy in just a few hours. And there you have it. You have now made a little acrylic keychain. This is perfect for your keys, for tumblers, for backpacks, back to school. It's, it's great for really whatever. Um, I highly recommend trying this. If you've got a CO2 laser, you can get acrylic from Amazon. That's where I got my first acrylic from. Uh, you can also get it from my favorite supplier now, Smoky Hill Laser Supplies. I'll have a link to them down below. Um, in fact, I just placed an order with them yesterday for a lot of new items. So I'm excited to get that stuff in. I'm excited to kind of take a look at it all and start working on some new colors, some new variations for projects coming up. But that's going to do it for this video. I hope you found it informative. 
I hope you were able to follow along and this is the type of video we're gonna be starting to do more of, more project videos, more start to finish videos, more videos to help you learn software like how we looked at the different functions that we used in Lightburn today. That is what my goal is here at Created Workshop on the YouTube side of things, is to help you grow your business as I grow mine. For those that don't know, at the beginning of this month, at the beginning of July of 2023, depending on when you're watching this, I went full time in the makerspace. It was not necessarily under the circumstances I expected it to be, but I fully have my faith in God that he's gonna take care of it all. And I'm really excited for what God has planned for Created Workshop. Each and every package we send out shares the gospel. We have a little red Bible that we put in the package and we have a Bible verse on all of our products and on a index card that we include with the package. It's got coupon codes, contact information, things of that nature. But we use this business not just as a way to help you grow your business, not just as a way for income, but as a ministry. And I hope you see that and I hope you realize that and I hope you pray for us in that, um, that God would bless the ministry. He would help us to be able to use it to reach more people with the gospel, to reach more people for Christ. Uh, but I have full faith that God's gonna use this YouTube channel and God's gonna use this business in great and mighty ways in the coming weeks, months, and years. I'm excited with the growth that we've already seen. I'm excited with the amount of growth we've seen on YouTube, getting new subscribers. We're, I believe, almost to 250. Thank you all for the subscriptions and for the views, um, and also for the sales that we've made and being able to produce things like this, to have the time to uh, R&D this, to figure out what all is needed for all of the various aspects of it. How does it engrave best? And you can see my settings back in the previous chapters of this, of this video uh, where I do all of that. But this, like I said, is gonna be what you can expect going forward. The next video will be a little bit more on the reviewee side of things, and those will be sprinkled in here and there. Uh, but the next video is going to be focused on comparing two pretty major hitters in the laser space. We've got the Monster K that we featured so far on the channel, and we've got something that we haven't featured on this channel yet. It's hiding right back over my shoulder, and that is the X-Tool 40 watt. Now, these lasers might have the same overall power, but they are nowhere in the same price league at all. In fact, the X-Tool is about four times the cost of a K40. So our next video, which should be out uh, in the next week or two, by the beginning of August, is the goal will be comparing the two, kind of showing you hands-on what we think of both, giving you an overview of both, and really giving you a rundown of whether it's worth almost $2,000 of your hard-earned money for an X-Tool 40 watt, or should you be in the $550 range of the K40? What are the pros and cons of both? Because let me tell you, there are pros and cons to both systems outside of price. And we'll be breaking all of that down in our next video before we start getting into even more project stuff. I'm hoping to have a whole lot more out throughout the rest of the year. If you have any, feedback, any specific videos that you would like to see on this channel, please let me know in the comments below. I will also be doing a video going over all of the accessories that I've got for my K40. As you saw when we did the cut, it probably doesn't look like yours. I've got a automatic bed in the, in the center of it. I've taken out all the other stuff and now it has just a regular uh, e bed that I can control from within Lightburn. So I'll be going over that, my air assist setup and my chiller, all of that stuff, air purification and extraction, all of that in a future video. But for now, this is Patrick with Creative. Thank you for watching. I appreciate all the subscriptions. If you like this video, like it down below. Don't forget to hit that notification and I'll catch you in the next one.